Welcome back. You're watching KTN News Desk. Many thanks for staying with us. Now, all bodies of the passengers and uh, the two pilots of the ill-fated Flysex aircraft were recovered Thursday at the crash site in southwest Abadez. The aircraft that went missing while en route to Nairobi on Tuesday evening crashed on the Abadez ranges due to circumstances that are yet to be established. The bodies of the victims are at the Lee Funeral Home here in Nairobi and relatives have been allowed to view the bodies which arrived last evening after the they were transported by road from Jambini. The government has promised a thorough investigations into the crash to unravel the cause of the accident. Preliminary reports say the ill-fated Flysex aircraft was first to land at Wilson Airport before it was rerouted to the JKIA. Also, our reporter, Julia Wino, has been camping at the Lee Funeral Home where the bodies of the 10 um, uh, who uh, crashed in that ill-fated aircraft uh, were taken. Julia now joins us live from there. A very good afternoon to you. I mean, what is happening there now? Uh, families, uh, you said earlier on that families have been allowed uh, to view their bodies uh, of their loved ones. What are they saying? Uh, good afternoon to you, Akisa. At this particular time, we can confirm that uh, the families have been allowed to view their bodies. Uh, if you can check to behind me on the on the left side where the tent, uh, the tent that was actually placed there, this is where the family members were actually sitting. And in there, they have with them uh, the Red Cross uh, counseling team, whereby before they actually go to view the body, they go with one uh, one member from the Red Cross counseling team uh, to actually identify the bodies of their family members. And I can confirm to you, Akisa, it's it's quite been a heartbreaking process. Uh, we could actually see the family members go walk inside and then they come back and uh, they would actually break down. Uh, it's been a tough period for them. And we managed to talk to one of the parents, that is a parent to Ruben Wafula, uh, the dad who is actually the car, the deputy county commissioner of Turkana. And uh, he told us of the story of his son, of how, how far his son was getting to be right now. Ruben was about 30 years years old was doing well business wise and uh, he's confirmed he was really proud of his son and what he was actually doing in his life but once he got the report about his son being involved in this mysterious accident he's really been heartbroken he's he, he'd actually been seeing his son grow to be the man he wanted to be so he was actually putting out all his energy to uh, to actually make him a better man. But now in the process of actually doing this, uh, this is exactly what happened. And uh, a few minutes ago, we've been addressed by one of the officials from SACS who's told us uh, the body identification has been successful in as much as uh, we could hear uh, complaints from this, or we could hear word from this, and is that uh, some bodies were damaged beyond face recognition. And uh, this actually prompted DNA tests to happen here. But however, so far, uh, the body identification search has been successful and amongst the people who are given priority are from the Muslim community being that uh, because of the tradition uh, one, one, the, the Muslim family are given priority in identifying the body and they are going to be the first ones uh, to be given their family their loved ones today to proceed with the burial purposes. On the other end we've also heard from the official who's telling us uh, they're still waiting for official communication from the government pathologists and also some of the government officials who are going to, uh, to tell them when exact the uh, the family members can actually proceed to to take the body and pro, and proceed with the burial uh, burial arrangements that are supposed to happen in due course. But they're also uh, pushing ahead in that. Uh, if they could actually get the, the, the report on time and on wh when exactly they can take their family members and proceed with the burial arrangements, that would be good for them, being that this has been quite a tough period since Tuesday. Uh, they've been camping at Western Hotel. The, uh, yesterday they were still waiting for reports, and when they got the report of uh, the bodies being uh, recovered and all that. Uh, back to you, Akisa. Right, uh, Julie, of course, we'll be coming back to you uh, sometime uh, during the program. She will be giving us periodic updates of how uh, events as they unfold at the Leaf Funeral Home. As she says, very heartbreaking um, session it is for uh, family and friends of those who died in that particular aircraft crash. Now, Dr. Richard Lesiampe, the principal secretary in the State Department of Agriculture, has this morning been questioned by members of the Parliamentary Accounts Committee over subsidized fertilizer. The PSC wanted the officials to respond to audit queries. So 
surrounding the procurement of subsidized fertilizer following irregularities revealed by Auditor General Edward Uko in his 2014-2015 and 2015-2016 audit reports. Our senior parliamentary reporter, Patrick Amimo, was in that particular grilling session. He now joins us live from Parliament. Patrick, good afternoon. What are some of the things that uh, the Parliamentary Accounts Committee wanted to find out uh, from the PS? Thank you. The PS uh, for crop production, Richard Lesiampe, has just been before the National Assembly's Public Accounts Committee to answer to some of these audit queries for as, as pertains to those two financial years between, between 2014 uh, to 2016. And he's told the committee that uh, at that particular period, the committee was uh, a bit concerned about uh, how one company, Hellbend, uh, was uh, given a three-year contract to supply fertilizer, subsidized fertilizer to Kenyan farmers. Uh, they wanted to know how, how that came to be and he said that um, that particular issue uh, he did handle it uh, as when um, that happened during the tenure of Sicily Karaoke as the PS in t for agriculture. That's when this particular company appeared to have enjoyed preferential treatment compared to other companies. Also he said that um, uh, when he came on board uh, it, he now opened the ground for and allowed eight other companies to, to participate in the uh, in the supply of these subsidized fertilizer, which caters mainly for uh, maize farmers and also those who are in, involved in other areas of production, like say uh, co co coffee, uh, uh, sugar, and coffee sector. So. It said that Abebas uh, were also concerned about a company by the name Global Link that was given uh, that won a tender, but later that tender was vitiated. They were asking how this company, which was which happened to be lowest bidder, was uh, was uh, its tender was, was cancelled after it it, it it won it. And the PS says that I uh, just gave an assumption. He thought that uh, probably the prices that were given by this particular company were below the international market prices then, and maybe it could not really uh, it could not be able to supply fertilizer at it. It had indicated in its uh, in its procurement or in this in, in its bid papers but then uh, members were concerned because there are, there are cases where companies uh, uh, individuals float uh, float different companies under their different different names but it happens to be that these particular companies are just owned by uh, same individuals uh, and it is it is a racket that is happening uh, in, in this particular sector and they are keen to have at least uh, to know the name of one uh, director, Teresia Kariuki, who happened to have supplied subsidized fertilizer. Members of the parliament will be keen to have her appear before the committee to shed more light on her, on how she supplied this particular subsidized fertilizer uh, to the National Cereals and Produce Board. It is also concerned by members that it appears uh, the NCPB is under the grip of cartels and they wanted to see whether parliament can be of use to see how they can go about ensuring that they free uh, the board from these uh, cartels who are uh, siphoning a lot of taxpayers money right from maize and now to fertilizer and the PS uh, the CMB says that it's true uh, the NCPB needs to be restructured and he says he wants to see parliament support him in, his, in restructuring the NCPB act to ensure that uh, uh, the operations at the board are streamlined so those are some of the issues that uh, members are looking at and with regard to uh, cartels, um, I mean, um, members, uh, the poor quality fertilizer that was supplied to farmers way back in 2015, uh, 2016, uh, as uh, planting season, uh, the PS says, interestingly, the PS says that uh, the report has not come to his, uh, to, to his attention as far as he knows it could have been a business rivalry. But we know on record that uh, farmers in North Rift and some part of the South Rift complained about the poor quality fertilizer, which led to stunted growth of their maize and also led to... Uh, poor yields uh, of the crop but the, the PS says that uh, according to him he, th he suspects uh, this might have been uh, a, a work of business rival business rivalry because officers in charge of quality control at the NCPB and CAFIS have not brought that matter to his attention so that's what happened at parliament at parliament here Thank you, Patrick, for that update. Patrick Amimo is a senior parliamentary reporter. He was at the grilling session where uh, PS uh, Richard Lesiampe was uh, being grilled by the Parliamentary Accounts Committee over the fertilizer um, scandal. And, of course, uh, he will be giving us some more details in our subsequent bulletins on the same. I want us to take a quick break as we wrap it up for our viewers on KTN Home. On KTN News, we will continue with this bulletin top on our agenda. When we get back, we will be taking a, a look at the G7 summit that President Uhuru Kenyatta 
Kenyatta is attending and will be addressing is one of the African, a few African leaders who will be addressing this particular um, uh, summit. We'll be speaking to State House spokesperson Manoa Espisu, who's joining us live by way of a Skype all the way from Quebec, and he will be giving us details of what really we expect from President Uhuru Kenyatta's address and why this is important to Kenya. Let's take that break as we wrap it up for our viewers on KTN Home. My name is Akisa Wandera. Good afternoon.